Good thing I'm here to babysit. Prue thought of Luke's big baby costume that really wasn't a costume and giggled at how appropriate her words were. Lucas was still alone. He'd wheeled himself to the very back of the little booth. The donation jar was still mostly empty. He cowered in the back corner like a frightened mouse. Her heart twisted. She just wanted to go scoop him up and cuddle him. Tell him everything was all right while she rubbed his diapered rump. Change him into a clean diaper. Reassure him. Lucas. I'm back. I ran into Rosie. She's going to hang with some friends from school she bumped into. She asked me to keep you company. You cool with that? It beats being alone. Lucas just wanted to go home. He was emotionally exhausted, which made him physically tired as well. His stomach rumbled low. This time, he felt it. He knew he'd have a messy diaper soon. He was too used to them to mind, but he didn't fancy spending all night in a poopy diaper. He took special pills that nullified fecal odors, so no one could smell when the back of his diaper was full. He didn't know what to make of this girl. Given her resemblance to the historical Prudence Piper, this Prudence Piper had to be a descendant. Why was she being so nice to him? People, especially strangers, normally gave up trying to talk to him after a few awkward sentences. When they realized what a weird, awkward freak he was. Unless Rosie was paying her new friend to watch him. Rosie had done that several times in the past with her various friends. His heart sank at the notion. He was just a burden to pass off, so Rosie could enjoy her night. He wanted his cousin to have fun, he just wished they could have fun together. Wished she wasn't such a rotten shithead. He suckled his pacifier and looked up at Prudence. She held out one cup and took a big gulp of the other. She licked melted chocolate and marshmallow off her lips. Um. It's really good. You'll like it. Do you want to come get it, or do you want me to bring it to you? I'm fine with either. The air chilled with a cold bite as the sun set lower. The red was gone, leaving magenta bleeding into deep purple and blue as the night crept in. Even his thick sleeper let the autumn chill in. A hot drink would warm his insides up and the sweet chocolate would soothe his frayed, jangled nerves. He sat Fiji on his lap. In his tired, flustered state he never noticed his open crotch and wet, exposed diaper. This girl, this prudence, got under his skin. She intimidated him, but she also was kind of fun. He'd be more relaxed if Rosie, someone he knew, was here. He enjoyed Prudence's company but was scared by it at the same time. The conflicting emotions confused him. He put a hand on each wheel, gave a big push and rolled forward. He stopped just short of where she stood. Thank you. The rubber nipple filling his mouth slurred his words. He was face level with the cup she held out. He stared down at the orange liquid. Melted marshmallow ghosts and milk chocolate bats. Cute. He smiled. Steam warmed his face and tickled his nostrils. The scent of chocolate soothed him. The tang of nail polish remover soured the warm notes of caramel and vanilla. His head jerked back, face wrinkled in disgust. He looked up at Prue. She smiled, reading his expression. They used an off-brand creamer. It has a bit of a bite, but it's still really good. Kinda reminds me of bourbon. She grinned like she was laughing at some private joke. D did it expire. His voice was soft. Slowly, he was warming up to Rose's new friend. She was a bit much to handle, but she was weird and he liked that. He was still afraid to talk, terrified he'd make himself out to be more of an idiot than he already was. Social anxiety played upon his insecurities, morphing his self-doubts and inner fears into crippling monsters. He was grateful to her for buying him a treat. He wondered if Rosie actually bought it and just had the girl give it to him. Rosie usually gave him sweets or candy when she felt guilty for being a jerk. It was her way of saying sorry. Quima. In hot choco it. That just sounded weird. 
yep. For the vanilla and caramel. Weird, right? But it's really good. It's not expired. Just try a few sips. Trust me. Rosie and the others had some. They all liked it. Prudence's lie was smoother than the bourbon. To add weight to her words, she tossed back her own drink in a few gulps. She finished, smacking her lips in exaggerated satisfaction, then tossed her empty cup over her shoulder. It landed sideways, a few orange drops spilling on the table. She pressed the other cup on him. She knew he'd like it once he tasted it. He just needed her goading to help him get past his nerves.